It is now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Renard U. Johnson. While Mr. Johnson was born in Chicago, he would be the first to say he's an El Paso native. He is, a, he is proud to be an Andrews High School graduate. Mr. Yes. Mr. Johnson holds a bachelor's degree in business administration with an emphasis in management from the University of Texas at El Paso. Mr. Johnson founded Management and Engineering Technologies International Incorporated, METI, in 1994 while he was still attending college. METI is a professional services company headquartered in El Paso, Texas, that provides system engineer, systems engineering and information technology support to a variety of federal and commercial customers. METI supports a number of federal agencies, including the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, FAA, and the USDA. METI has successfully completed $250 million worth of federal contracts in its 20-year history and is recognized as one of the best small businesses in the nation. Mr. Johnson is very committed and passionate about his community and gives back his time to a number of civic and non-civic organizations. He is a director for the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, El Paso branch, former chairman of the Board of El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, director of the Texas Lyceum, member of the UTEP College of Engineering Advisory Board, member of the UTEP President's Centennial Commission, Chairman of the Governing Board for Sierra Providence and Sierra Providence East Medical Centers, Member of the Educate Texas and Texas Student Success Councils, and Graduate of the El Paso FBI Academy. Mr. Johnson is an inspiration and a role model for how each of you graduates can be successful and give back to your community. Please help me welcome Mr. Renard Johnson. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome distinguished guests, family members, and friends. Thank you, Dr. Serrata, for their very warm introduction and for your inspired leadership here at El Paso Community College. To the distinguished board of directors, faculty, and staff, I also want to thank you for inviting me to give the 2014 commencement speech. Today, this speech is going to be interactive. Every time I say El Paso Community College, or EPCC, I want you guys to shout out Class of 2014. Now here we go. Hello, El Paso Community College. Congratulations, you did it. When Dr. Serrata asked me to speak today, I asked him how much time will I have to give my speech. He was very kind and said, Renard, take whatever time you need it. So, before I begin with my three-hour speech, I hope you guys don't mind if I commemorate today's ceremony with a selfie from my Facebook, and I'm going to tweet it out later. So I need you to yell and scream and make some noise. Here we go. Thank you. Today I want to recognize the many sacrifices that many of you have made in order to get here. And I also want to share with you my journey, which is probably not that much different than some of yours. Today is a day to reflect. By being here, all of you have demonstrated your hard work, your dedication to achieving an education. I know for a fact that many of you have worked full time while attending school. Many of you had families to raise, while some of you even had to take out student loans. Or you may have had to charge your personal credit cards. Or in some cases, your parents were nice enough to let you charge their credit cards. However you did it, you got it done, and I applaud you for that. Some. As already mentioned, 
Some of you have even balanced going to school while serving our great nation. So everyone, please join me again in a round of applause for our service men and women. Okay, by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Oscar Award winner Tom Hanks, Morgan Freeman, or Clint Eastwood? How about fashion designer Calvin Klein? Great. Or what about entertainment icon Walt Disney? Do you know what these accomplished people have in common with you? They all attended a community college. And they all went on to do great things in life. By now, you know that El Paso Community College, you guys, you guys can do better than that, right? You know by now that El Paso Community College is no doubt the best place to start. As you go forward in life, I encourage you to continue your educational journey. Your generation has so much more than we did. For example, we have seen a transformation in technology unlike in any other period of time. As a matter of fact, when I attended school, we had cell phones that looked like this. <laughs> and now you guys have smartphones with more memory than the original supercomputer. In order for my generation to do research, we had to go to the library. There was, we got a librarian in the house. There was no such thing as search engines like Google or Bing. We didn't have fancy things, websites or apps like Wikipedia, Facebook, Twitter, Splitter, Glitter, Help, Yelp, and so on. Technology and knowledge are power. Please use those tools to your advantage. When I was asked to speak today, I wanted to make sure that my speech would be short, not really three hours, and that it would leave each of you with something that would give you the incentive to go as far in life as you possibly can. Allow me to share with you one of my personal philosophies, which goes like this. To live, you need food, water, and shelter. But to live well, one needs an education. Your life will not be perfect with an education, but it will be better. In order to tell you why I believe that with all of my heart, I have to tell you a little bit about myself. And my story is very simple. I was born on the south side of Chicago, Illinois, in a neighborhood which was and still is a very poor area. My family moved to El Paso when I was very young. I grew up in Northeast El Paso, where I attended Terrace Hills Elementary School. And I graduated from Andrews High School. I know there's some eagles out there. Go eagles. I was just an average student. I got mostly C's, and every now and then I got a B or an A. I had several part-time jobs during high school, including working at a go-kart track. I mowed lawns, I worked at McDonald's. However, I always aspired to be an entrepreneur at a young age. And I started my own mobile DJ service when I was just 16. My family has a long, successful history of entrepreneurship. My grandfather was self-employed. Now just imagine, if you will, being black in rural Mississippi in the 1920s, where he cut and sold timber from a family-owned property. My mother and father have also owned several very successful businesses. I have a cousin who has recently become one of the first black casino owners in the United States. Thank you.
It gets better. <laughs> Some of you may have heard of a, a company called Black Entertainment Television, or BET. It was founded by my cousin, Robert Johnson, who was one of the first black billionaires in the United States. <laughs> Growing up, my parents made one thing very clear to me and my siblings, and that was dropping out of school, short of obtaining a college degree, simply was not an option. So after I graduated from school, I attended the EPCC and the University of Texas at El Paso, where I received my Bachelor's of Business Administration and I majored in management. When I was just 28 years old, I founded my own company, Management and Engineering Technologies International, Inc., or METI. I had seven employees. I had absolutely no customers. I had no revenue. I invested my entire life savings into starting my company. I maxed out all of my credit cards. However, I always had a dream of what my company could be and would be. And today, we have over 300 employees worldwide providing engineering and IT services support to our nation's warfighters and other federal customers. As I grew my business, I learned the value of having mentors. And my greatest mentor is my father. He has always said that you must give back to your community, your city, and your country in which you live. I have tried to live up to that standard. And as Dr. Sarata mentioned, today I serve on a number of boards. To include, I am the current chairman of the board of the Sierra Providence East Hospital, I am the former chairman of the board of the El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And one of my highlights is that I am now serving on the board of directors of the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank, the El Paso branch, which has allowed me to participate in setting economic policy for our nation. Even with all that I have done for my community, my country, this city has given me more than I will ever be able to repay. As you go forward in life, it is your charge to get involved, serving your community. And I assure you that opportunities will develop once you get involved. A good education cannot be taken away from you. It is perhaps the most single important reason for success or failure. Obtaining an education is the foundation for all of the good things you want to accomplish in life. If you want to take care of your parents, your kids, your grandparents, your family, it all starts with an education. If you want to set up a scholarship to help other young people, it all starts with getting an education. If you want to be a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer, a business owner, it all starts with getting an education. Remember, lots of people made your education possible. Members of your family, the EPCC, faculty and staff, the city as a whole. So you have a responsibility not to waste it, for it is more precious than silver or gold. You can and must be willing to help others that are less fortunate than yourselves. And know that every time you help someone else, you will grow as a person. We are all here today to tell you how very proud we are of all your achievements. We are also here to tell you that you are now one of the new leaders in your community and that great things are expected of you. So your hard work has just begun. In closing, I challenge each of you, when you walk out these doors today, be determined to leave your footprint on life. 
Continue your education. Do it for yourself. Do it for your family. Congratulations and well done, EPCC, Class of 2014. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, thank you for that wonderful commencement address. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is my pleasure to confer on you the award of Honorary Associate's Degree. It reads as follows. Be it known that Renard Johnson, entrepreneur, innovator, successful businessman, community volunteer, native El Pasoan, and passionate friend of the El Paso Community College, is hereby awarded an Honorary Associate of Arts Degree and is entitled to the rights and privileges appertaining to that recognition. In testimony whereof, the Board of Trust Trustees has granted this honorary diploma bearing the seal of the college done this 16th day of May 2014. I would now like for the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Ch Art Fierro, to present you with the stole signifying a tradition as an honorary graduate of El Paso Community College. The stole was designed yes. The stole was designed by our own EPCC Fashion Technology faculty member, Ms. Trish Weinstead, and is dedicated to the memory of Eugene Pate, former interior design faculty member. Thank you, Trish. With the award of the Honorary Associates of Arts degree, El Paso Community College is establishing the Renard U. Johnson Endowed Scholarship Fund and designating $25,000 for that purpose. This will allow EPC students for generations to come to benefit from your legacy as a true educational leader, role model, and dedicated El Pasoan. Renard, we value your friendship, and we thank you for your service to our community, our state, and our college. Welcome to the El Paso Community College family. 